Welcome back to Brotalian. On today's video, we're gonna be talking a little bit about NASA's announcement of the crew that will be the next to travel to the moon. Before we dive into today's video, we wanted to take a brief pause to honor the nine lives lost on March 29th, 2023 uh, in the tragic accident that claimed uh, nine members of Charlie Company 6101. These are members of our community. These are members of the unit that I've most recently served with. And it would be difficult for us to put any, you know, video or any sort of thing out without taking the time to, to honor their lives, their legacy, and the sacrifices that they've made and that their families have made. It's a new era of pioneers, star sailors, thinkers, and adventurers. Go, prop, go, CDA, go, Fido, go. All right, so go for launch. Our destiny is always to go and see what's further and what's next. Fido, I'm on the floor. Now that we got that little bit of hype out of the way, on April 3rd, NASA announced the crew officially for uh, the Artemis 2 mission. As you saw, that was their little hype trailer, and we did cut out the part where they're like, oh, announcing April 3rd, because it's past that date, and here we are. Today, we're gonna talk a little bit about the crew that will be piloting Artemis 2 and some of their background. Before we dive into their individuals, we'll start out with just a brief intro. Reed Weissman is serving as the commander Victor Glover is the primary pilot. Christina Hammock Cook is the is a mission specialist, and Jeremy Hansen is also a mission specialist. Now, Jeremy Hansen is Canadian. The Artemis II crew is actually a joint effort between NASA and the Canadian Space Agency. Starting off with our introductions is Captain Reed Weissman, who is serving as the mission commander on Artemis II. Reed earned his commission through ROTC and originally flew F-14 Tomcats in the United States Navy. Eventually, he went on to become a uh, U.S. Naval test pilot where he was involved in a multitude of projects, including flight test programs on the F-35, the F-18, T-45, and multiple others. Um, after returning out to the flight squadrons and, you know, serving on multiple deployments, he was selected uh, for the astronaut training program. He was selected in 2009. He was one of nine members of the 20th astronaut class 
finished his astronaut training in 2011, and then went on to serve as a flight engineer, uh, flight engineer aboard the International Space Station on Expedition 41. In addition to Reed Weissman's numerous educational accolades, he completed over 300 scientific experiments in his 165 day mission aboard the International Space Station and accumulated 13 hours as lead spacewalker during two trips outside of the orbital complex. During this time, he did foster a strong social media presence by sharing the raw emotions of spaceflight as seen through the eyes of a flyer. Most recently, Reed Weissman served as the chief of the astronaut office, and he actually stepped down as chief of the astronaut office in order to be assigned as the commander of NASA's Artemis II mission. Now, if that doesn't give some Ed Baldwin vibes from the show uh, for all mankind, then I don't know what, what else would, but pretty incredible. Next up is Victor J. Glover Jr., who also served as a naval aviator, earning his wings in 2002, primarily serving as an F-18 Charlie pilot. He, you know, did a couple deployments, eventually went on to actually earn a spot in the exchange program with the United States Air Force Test Pilot School. During his one-year experimental test piloting course, he flew more than 30 aircraft in the United States and Italy. In 2007, he was designated as a test pilot. Upon return, Glover worked out at China Lake, testing various weapon systems on the F-18, the E-18 Growler, and a multitude of other aircraft. Uh, in addition to his academic accolades, he eventually was selected uh, for a legislative fellowship in Washington, D.C. with the Office of Legislative Affairs. He was serving in the Office of Legislative Affairs uh, with the U.S. Senate specifically when he was selected as an astronaut candidate. Glover has accumulated over 3,000 flight hours in more than 40 aircraft, has over 400 carrier-arrested landings, and has flown more than 24 combat missions. Selected in 2013, he was one of eight members of the 21st NASA astronaut class and graduated in 2015. Most recently, Victor Glover served as the pilot as well as second command on Crew-1 SpaceX Crew Dragon named Resilience, which landed May 2, 2021. He also served as a flight engineer aboard the International Space Station during Expedition 64. His recent experience as a pilot aboard the SpaceX Crew Dragon spacecraft, you know, undoubtedly leads us to believe that this is why he has been chosen to be the pilot of NASA's Artemis II mission. Next on the list of crew announcements is Christina Hammock Cook, who has a vastly different experience background than the previous crew members that we've talked about. Cook's career prior to becoming an astronaut was both in space science instrument development as well as remote scientific field engineering. Beginning her work with NASA at the Goddard Space Flight Center, she worked as an electrical engineer to, and contributed to scientific instruments on several NASA space science missions. Cook went on to perform research as part of the United States Antarctic program, which included a year-long stay over winter at the Admonson Scott South Pole Station and a season at Palmer Station. During her time in this role, she participated in firefighting, search and rescue teams, and extensive research as part of those programs. Upon her first return from the Arctic, Cook served as an electrical engineer at the Johns Hopkins University Applied Physics Laboratory Space Department, where she contributed to instruments on missions including the Juno and Van Allen probes. After that, she actually went back to work with the United States Antarctic Program uh, with tours both at Palmer Station in Antarctica, as well as a winter season um, or winter seasons at Summit Station in Greenland. If that wasn't enough, she went on to work for the National Oceanic and Atmospheric Administration, also known as NOAA, where she worked at remote scientific bases serving as a field engineer in Alaska, as well as a station chief of the American Samoa Observatory. In 2013, she was also chosen as one of the eight members of that 21st NASA astronaut class alongside Victor Glover and completed her astronaut candidate training in 2015. In 2018, she was assigned to her first space flight, a long duration mission on the International Space Station. Cook has served as a flight engineer for expeditions 59, 60, and 61, where she set the record for the longest single space flight by a woman with a total of 328 days in space, as well as participated in the first all-female spacewalks. 
Her undeniable experience as a researcher and as a flight engineer has led her to be assigned as Mission Specialist 1 of NASA's Artemis II mission. Christina Hammett Cook is currently slated to be the first female that will set foot on the moon. Last but certainly not least is Canadian Space Agency astronaut Colonel Jeremy Hansen. At just the age of 17, Colonel Hansen was accepted for officer training through the Royal Military College St. Jean. Hansen completed his bachelor's degree with honors in space science in 1999. In 2003, Colonel Hansen went on to complete F-18 fighter pilot training at the 410th Tactical Fighter Operational Training Squadron and then continued to serve with several squadrons in support of NORAD operations, deployed exercises, and Arctic flying operations through 2009. In 2009, Colonel Hansen is one of two recruits selected by the Canadian Space Agency through the third astronaut recruitment campaign, which we'll take a moment to talk about because it is a little bit different. The 2009 astronaut recruitment campaign in Canada had over 5,000 hopefuls apply. This process lasts about a year. After initial screening, about 79 candidates that were around the world received an interview. From the interview, 44 candidates were proceeded, uh, or proceeded on to the medical examination phase, and then only 39 candidates moved on to the next phase of competition, which really focused on everything from mental agility to stamina, written tests, hazardous simulations, survival tests, as well as their ability to communicate. During the selection process, they even went so far as to partake in a fire rescue exercise in a mock ship that was put together at the Canadian Forces Naval Engineering School in Halifax, Nova Scotia. Of the previously noted candidates, only 16 of the most outstanding individuals proceeded on to the next phase where they had to prove their ability to be a good spokesperson for the agency. In May of 2009, after months of grueling evaluations, the process came to an end, and out of the 79 individuals, only two candidates made the final cut, David St. Jacquet and Jeremy Hansen. Hansen went on to graduate astronaut candidate training in 2011 and begins working at the Mission Control Center as CAPCOM, the voice between the ground and the International Space Station. Colonel Hansen goes on in 2014 as a crew member of NEMO-19, where he lives and works on the ocean floor in an Aquarius habitat off Key Largo, Florida, for a week simulating deep space exploration. Hansen's skill and expertise were recognized in 2017 when he became the first Canadian entrusted with leading a NASA astronaut class, meaning that he was in charge of training astronauts from the United States and Canada. And this year, in 2023, Colonel Hansen was assigned to the Artemis II mission. We want to thank everybody for stopping by the Brutalian channel. Again, be sure to check out the description below. There's some great information um, in that description about how you can support various things that Brutalian and the Blue Skies Foundation currently have going on. For all of our subscribers who are watching for the 1,000 subscriber giveaway, be on the lookout that will be releasing this weekend, and we are very excited to share that with you and to send the Bose A20 headset to its rightful owner. Again, if you like the content, be sure to drop in the comments below. Smash subscribe. Give us a thumbs up. Let us know what you guys want to see more of. In the description below, we'll also link the Artemis 1 video that we did quite a while ago, and there will be an Artemis 2 video releasing here in the next two weeks or so um, that will be covering basically the difference in those missions and what the full mission plan for Artemis 2 is. Till next time, guys, thanks for stopping by the Brutalian channel.